Hey everybody, welcome back. So out here in North Carolina at the Durham Armory, every few months Show Me Your Reptiles comes through and puts on a show out there. We've got a little reptile expo and it's a pretty small venue. Uh, this time they had the place packed wall to wall. Um, it was the biggest show that I'd seen in this particular venue and we were asked to come out and put on a presentation about reticulated pythons. So we took of course Chloe here she had to come with me because she's our most gregarious reticulated python she just wants to meet and talk to everybody and get into everything that she can uh, we took our two big retics and then Jay our uh, orange glow phantom out there with us as well so we recorded the entire event we got everything all the way up to the questions section before the camera died on me because I guess I've got to learn how to put a uh, put a timer up so I was using a shotgun mic out there, which picked up a whole lot of the background crowd noises. So here in the next couple weeks, I'll probably start looking at a uh, lapel mic, something that's going to work a little bit better for settings like that, because it can be kind of difficult when you got a crowd and you're trying to stay close to the mic and you got 16 foot snakes to work with. But you'll have to excuse that part of it. It's still audible, so you should still be able to hear most of it. So we've done a lot of different public education events with like parks and different groups and museums and stuff like that and come on girl quit running away but this was the first actual reptile expo that invited us out to speak so we had a lot of fun out there it was a really good show had a great time and I just wanted to share that with you guys so without further ado let's go to the Durham National Guard Armory to the show me reptile show and see how the presentation went just so everybody knows I'm actually I'm filming this and we just wanted to come down to a quick presentation today for everybody talking about reticulated pythons. My name's Tim and I'm with Intrepid Exotics. What we focus on mainly is as, as these expos get more popular and certain breeds of snakes are becoming more prevalent in the expos and so forth, we're always concerned about what happens to the animals after they leave the expo. Um, now you guys will see there's a lot of really awesome animals here, there's a lot of awesome breeders, and there's a lot of awesome species, and you'll see a lot of things like ball python at the expo, a uh, really popular pet. You'll also see sometimes reticulated pythons, which is specifically what we're talking about today. And this girl is a rescue reticulated python, she's what's called a lavender morph, there's a uh, uh, with albino, there's white phase, there's lavender phase, and purple phase. Now this little girl came to me from a really cold, really bad environment, and it's just been an awesome pet. But this is kind of typical of what you'll see first coming up to an expo. You know, a lot of people don't really bring the adult retakes out, but I've got a couple of adult retakes here that we're going to talk about today, because it's really important that everybody understands when you get these at this size, in pretty short order, in the course of a couple years, you're going to be looking at a snake that's significantly bigger, significantly more complicated to handle, which is one of the things that we focus on, is um, really, really trying to help people understand the body language of the snakes and how to negotiate them. Because when you get a snake that's 16, 18, 20 feet long, you can't muscle them around like you can a little baby like this. You've got, to, you've got to know how to negotiate with them. You've got to understand how to communicate with them and you know, know what their body language says. You know how to, know how to go about um, managing them without getting yourself hurt. I'm going to put this little girl back because I know everybody's here to see the big things. Every smaller thing, you know, it's great. This snake is so good. Every time I walk up behind the door, they're all first thing she does is right to the door. As soon as I open it up, like this morning, before you came out, opened up the door and she just right up on my shoulder. Now, I've got a little spicier guy here. This is, this is my male. He's an orange glow phantom region. And a lot of these animals, too, I don't have... I don't have exact dates that they've born, so I don't have exact ages on them, I can only guess. Because a lot of my animals have been taken in from folks that are either moving, they can't take their animals with them, or they've been mistreated and we've been you know, called in to rescue them. 
This is pretty typical of what you'll see with an adolescent male recently. And this is still for a lot of people look at this and go, oh man, this is a huge snake. Because you know, it's so much bigger and longer than you know, your typical ball pythons and stuff like that. Um, but this is tiny for a ridiculous python. For those of you who don't know, three ticks, and you'll hear them called three ticks all the time, three tick related python. They get that name because of the reticulated pattern, just like a giraffe. Uh, giraffes have got reticulated, or reticulated pattern. The only thing is, is it doesn't apply as much anymore because there's so many more. Like you can go up here, and he's got dozens and dozens of reticulated pythons up here. And you'll be hard pressed to find any five that are the same. It adds with three different traits, three different patterns, different colors, things like that. And uh, so there is a, a lot of breeding going on with these guys. And they're so much fun to work with. Reticulated pythons are among the most intelligent snakes on the planet, hands down. And you can look at some snakes and you kind of get that, that insect-like behavior. You know, they react to stimuli and stuff like that. And when you take your retics out, you can legitimately see them thinking. They consider their environment. They learn to recognize their handlers and their keepers. They remember good experiences, which is what we try to foster. And they remember bad experiences too which can make them really challenging once they get bigger. And this guy, what is he doing? See, this, this is the natural state of a reticulated python. Um, when we talk about him these guys, I tend to think of it as, I want them to be as close to the natural state as possible. Their natural state isn't biting, it's not fighting. You know, they've got to hunt, they've got to eat and so forth. They're ambush predators. But their natural state is relaxed and inquisitive. And the only reason they get any other way is because they're afraid of you, the animal. So, we're going to go ahead and get Monty out now. This guy needs to get home to play because he's just they're all for energy. These guys, for me, these, this is my favorite reptile hand job. The most awesome. And so you guys can see too, as we talk about needing to get two people for these larger fish, I'm a very experienced handler. This snake's been over 20 years in August. And it's still awkward trying to get this little snake off of here. Because these guys, Although they're smart, they're really great to work with. They're kind of like a stubborn tooth. Once they get it in the mind, they want to do something. They want to do it. So what I've got in here is my female. She is a motley. You know, she comes out. She looks a lot different from the female out here. She's closer to the natural pattern that you'll see in the particular python. But you'll also see, and I make sure that I bring this up, if you guys are considering buying a reticulated python, a boa, anything that gets over six, eight feet, you really need to make sure you're investing in snake hooks. And the reason why you do that is, like I said, and no way and wait for movement, for a heat signature, or to see something and then they'll strike it. And they'll immediately grab it, wrap it up, because they can't chase their prey. They don't have legs. And almost everything can run faster than a snake. So, when you see something with the larger snakes, what I tend to do is I open the lids like this, so that way if they're, if they're anxious or if they're nervous or something like that, if I was to open this like that, then they can shoot right out, you know, fight me so forth. So you always, you kind of use it as a shield, shield and you look in to determine what their frame of mind is. And this girl, I've had her since she was the size of Chloe. I know this is really not So I'm really not worried about it. But, come on girl. Come on, sweetie. You guys will have to excuse me ahead of time. She always makes me work up a sweat. Yes, she is a heavy girl. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. Now, a couple things you guys will notice about that. There's a, this is heavy. <laughs> but I'm going to work with these guys. I'm feeding the closures and stuff like that. It can really be a workout. And the first thing to notice when I'm handling her is I don't let her get all the way around my neck. And I know. <laughs> I think she's get a shot. Come on, I've had her since she was about four. And she is pushing about five years old right now. You guys might think this is a big snake, but reticulated pythons are the longest snake species on the planet. They get about eight feet longer than that. And up to 100 pounds heavier. She, she weighs 80 pounds right now. I've worked with I've worked with retakes that were pushing 200 pounds before, twice her weight, and she's 16 feet, 80 pounds. Um, they will get the biggest one on record in captivity. We know of is 25 feet. So that's an extra lot of feet. <laughs> These guys get really big. and. So one of the things that we do when we go out and talk with folks, it's kind of a double-edged sword talking about reticulated pythons because they're awesome, they're intelligent, they can be really, really easy to handle, they can be a workout, but these can also be terrifying for some people if you don't put the effort into learning their behavior, learning how to keep them comfortable. Um, because that is the only thing that builds that relationship, is it just make trust implicitly. Once I take her out, once I make sure I, you know, I go into an enclosure, I hook her down, and I make sure she doesn't have an active food response, all I've got to do is take her out, and I never have to worry about her bite at once. And you'll see <laughs> with her and with the male, and I'm getting ready to bring out too, um, no worries at all. No matter how much we tussle around, how much we wrestle, uh, I don't stress it at all. And you'll see, it'll, it'll make people kind of on an edge too, working with these guys, because they'll hang out. Particularly the pythons are natural and arboreal snakes when they're young. Uh, they're from Southeast Asia, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, that area. When they're young, they're up in the trees all the time because although these guys are considered apex predators, <coughs> which means that in their natural environment, they're on the top of the predatory scale. When you get, a, when you get an 18, 20 foot snake, there's not too much that's really going to give the runs that's honey. But, you know, when they're born, you can see up there, they're really tiny, you know? And they are food for everything. So the way they survive is by being afraid of them. So that's all stuff that we work on getting around. And then we're gonna like I said, it's really intelligent. They remember, they remember good interactions and they remember bad interactions. And uh, oh, that's what I was going to talk about. I'm going to talk about when they squeeze you <laughs> like this. You can see she's wrapped around my legs and uh, wrapping around my waist. All of this that she's doing is just to hang out and support herself. Long enough to get back in the tub. So she's gonna be camera shy today. <laughs> but this girl, like I said, 16 feet, and I expect her. I mean, these these snakes will live, um, you know, 20, 30 years. If you care for them properly, and um, yeah. Thank you so much. That is a Tupperware with a giant snake. Yes. <laughs> so that's our female. And like I said, she's only 16 feet long. She is going to get every bit of 18 to 20 feet um, in the 20 to 30 years that they're living captivity. Now, um, the snake that she's bringing over now is my male. 
<laughs> and you're gonna hear Now, when it comes to snakes, you're going to hear the term sexually dimorphic. That means that the males don't grow as large as the females are snakes. And as you're talking with some folks about reticulated the pythons, you may hear them say something like, well, get a male. They don't get as big. <laughs> a little backstory on this guy. Uh, like I said, I get, I have gotten almost every one of my animals, either from a rescue situation, or from some place where they weren't really in the best care. When I first got him, he was 12 feet long, absolutely terrified of human beings. He had some bad experiences, and um, for the first month or so that I'd go and take him out of the enclosure, he'd strike the glass, he chased me out of the enclosure one time. Um, very, very fearful of people. And after about a month or two of working with him, we got him chilled out. Now, before I get him out, I will say he's in shed. Past blue, so his eyes aren't hazed up yet. But um, I did want to, I typically would have left him back, being this close to the shed. But I wanted to be able to demonstrate the, the size that you can expect a male to So he's got to look really powdery. As he's coming up, that means that his skin has separated. And here in the next couple days, he's going to get back in, we're going to mist him down. He's going to be shed. Now I'm being a lot more careful with him simply because he is in shed. You're going to get kind of cantankerous when you're this close to shed. So I just try and be respectful with him and understand he's not 100% comfortable. So, this is a male reticulated python that doesn't get as big as the female. <laughs> uh, and like I said, this is the reason why I brought him out today. Is because you guys really need to be aware of the fact that, you know, even if you're getting things like dwarf retics, heck, excuse me for a second, I'm not in the best shape. He's heavy. <laughs> But um, you will hear people talking about locality reticulated pythons. Uh, you hear them referred to as dwarf and super dwarf. You know, those tend to stay since they come from smaller islands, uh, less abundant prey items. They'll be a lot smaller, adults getting like 10, 12 feet long. Uh, but with the, way, with the way they're growing in popularity, the, the localities, a lot of people that are kind of breeding them with mainland reticulated pythons because they want to get the different attributes. You know, like if you want to get this color pattern, <laughs> you want to get this color pattern, you might be hard pressed to find it on a smaller locality, so they breed them with the mainlands to get that color pattern in there. The problem is, is now you've got a snake that's only 50% boar and 50% mainland. But the toss up, you know, you buy it because you want a small snake, you think it's only going to get 20, 10, 12 feet. Now, all of a sudden, the other side of their genetics kick in, and you've got a big, big snake on your hand. So, again, like I said, people will get nervous about them wrapping and hanging on, and yeah, I'm panting and all that stuff, but they're just I'm out of shape. So, and, uh, but there's no malice in this animal at all, even as grumpy as he is. Even as much as I've been you know, jostling him around, getting ready to go into shed, still not the least bit worried about this animal biting. Now, ah, yeah. <laughs> he is. He is. He's about 80 pounds as well. Now keep in mind too, and this will show the sexual dimorphism of the animals. Um, when he was 12 feet long, and this guy was 12 feet long, the female that I had out was about five feet long. So, in that time, he's grown four feet, and she's grown, what, 11 feet? 
but she really outpaced him, and I expect her to get bigger than him. She's between 10 and 15 years old. So you're not going to see too many. Matter of fact, a lot of people that I talked to have never seen a male articulated python this big. Um, you know, a lot of people say, are you sure? <laughs> because they're just not really common. But they can get this big, and they will. And I have seen, uh, seen family jewels on these guys, so I know what they meant. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I checked because, like I said, it just... So, I need to go. Oh, what do they eat? <laughs> it's another thing to keep in mind, too. If you're going to have big snakes this size, you really want to make friends with the farmers. <laughs> now, you'll hear... You'll hear all kinds of people talking about how they're eating deer and antelope and people and stuff like that. Um, when you get in the wild, and you've got an 18, 20 foot reticulated python, and you've got somebody your size, um, that snake can eat you. <laughs> um, when you're talking about a reticulated python eating a full grown adult, it's, it's really, really not common. It's not possible in a lot of cases because the, the way their mouth is structured, if they can get over your head, they can constrict you to death, but then they can't get over your shoulders. So, you need to let me go. <laughs> and there's um, there's also a hard fast rule to remember too and you've got and you can see oh, he's, he's hanging on I ain't going nowhere for a minute so I'll talk um, <laughs> anytime you're working with snakes close to this size you always have a second person available that's familiar with them that knows what to do uh, anytime I'm out and I let people handle these snakes the first thing we do is we talk about this is what you do if the snake bites you because it happens. I've been bitten by snakes this size before. I had a mistake in food response. Um, 16, 17 foot female. Uh, I made a mistake. That's another thing you'll hear. If you ever get bitten by a snake, it's your fault. You did something wrong. The snake is only doing what it's naturally predisposed to do. And it's our job as keepers to make sure that we learn how to recognize what your frame of mind is and do the right thing with it. So, you know, kind of the long and short of all of this stuff is that this animal, for me, the way I've raised him, is just a peach. I'm not worried about him. Matter of fact, I've got this on video. I should, maybe one of these days I'll bring video up here. Um, I had him out in the backyard this past summer, and he was just out running around. One of the neighbors that he didn't recognize came across the yard. And he ran straight up to me, straight up, got up on my shoulders just like this. Because he's seen something that he wasn't familiar with, he maybe perceived it as a threat, and he looks at me as a sense of security because we have got that, that relationship. Um, the only thing we just got to do with him is make sure that we're responding properly to what they do. And are we going to go home? So yeah, as, as you talk about snakes too, this is pretty much, when you talk to keepers, this is the most terrifying of the snakes, the male reticulated python, with its modified combat teeth and its breeding behaviors and it's just bad attitude. And you guys can see. <laughs> you guys can see, he's just a baby. And it's all about the effort that we put into learning. And that's one of the things that, that really made me start. I've got the YouTube channel. If you guys want, I've got some business cards over there. You can check out a lot more stuff working with these guys. But the whole point to me starting the channel and starting to talk about it is because, I don't know, with these animals, you just, there's got to be that awareness out there. You've got to know what you're getting yourself into. Oops, sorry. Like I said, they can, be, they can be the best animals in the world to work with. Or they can be elite. Yeah. Somebody your size? I think you might weigh a couple pounds more than the last meal you yeah, <laughs> And yeah, you guys, was, you guys was talking about uh, feeding too. Sorry, I just jumped right by that. These guys eat pigs and rabbits primarily. So. Oh my gosh, I'm tired. <laughs> he is like, no, oh, I am the star of the show. <laughs> These animals are amazingly strong. Amazingly strong. Um, like I said, if he was to wrap me up and seriously want to hold me there, 
I would have a really hard time getting away on my own. If he does? <laughs> if they're only wrapping me, like what will happen a lot of times is um, when you hear about accidents with retakes, a lot of times it's because people let them around their necks. And as you can see, when you let them out, they've got to hang on so they don't fall to the ground. And, you know, I've had I've had a 20-foot retake pulling it down before. Um, and as it got halfway to the ground, threw three wraps around me. <laughs> and was just hanging out for dear life. And all you do, you know, like I said, all, they're just trying to not fall. So you help them to the ground. Once you get their head to the ground and they start to feel secure, more often than not, they'll just loosen up and they'll go on about their business. Unless it's a food response. <laughs> the food response bites, like I said, they'll lay in wait and um, they will get a hold of you and wrap it. This is what happened here about 16 foot. She got me right here. Before I knew it, she had coils around my arm, my head, and everything. So I had to have my buddy come out, start from the tail, and start unwinding the snake, but she's got to hold their head, too. Because, bah, let me say, excuse me. You guys are a workout. <laughs> but they've got six rows of recurved teeth inside their mouth. It's made to hang on to their prey. So when they get you, you're not getting away. If, if you try and pull them off, all six rows of the teeth are going to slice your ribbon. So you got to let them stay there. You secure their head. You keep them from moving around. Keep them from cutting up. Have somebody else get their body off them. Get them stretched out on the ground. And it works with food response bites too sometimes. If you can get them stretched out and they've still got their head and secure on the ground, a lot of times they'll realize what's going on and they'll let go. Because they'll feel exposed and they're stretched out like that. Um, Otherwise, you can put things like alcohol. Uh, I keep brown listerine on hand. You can shoot that into the heat pits. It doesn't hurt them. Um, they're not happy about it. <laughs> they don't like the taste. And, the and there's actually a technique that uh, a friend of mine, Garrett Hartle, put out where he actually had one get all the in, and he started chewing on his tail like a corn cob. Immediately, the snake went down. It wasn't hard enough to hurt the snake, but it was enough to get its attention and realize that it didn't need to be done so. Yeah. So. so, do you guys have any questions while you're standing here? Anything that I didn't cover? Can you trade mine into that? I look. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys have a good day. Uh, more likely than not, yeah. Uh, I, I'm always on the lookout for problem animals that, as a matter of fact, I've got. We've got a lot of people that will contact me over Facebook and over the channel, and we will do um, a video contact where I can actually watch the snake's behavior and kind of guide them on when the right time is to do this and that. Because uh, normally, then, it just takes a couple little tweaks, uh, a couple little different things to pick up, and it changes the entire relationship. Now, what's your opinion on enclosure feeding versus tuck feeding? Enclosure feeding, 100%. 